Hello everyone, my name is Nina. In today's video, I will show you how you calculate the maximum wave induced inertia force using Morrison's equation. So our problem is a vertical cylindrical structural member of an offshore structure with diameter one meter is installed at a site where the water depth is 150 meters and the mean current is negligible. The design wave for the structural member has a height of 8 meters and a period of 12 seconds. Uh, I show all this uh, data on a diagram. Also on this diagram, I define my coordinate system. My origin starts at still water level. My longitudinal coordinate is x and vertical coordinate is z. So origin is at still water level, SWL, therefore Z is negative below still water level. Also, I show some uh, constant values which are given, drag coefficient, inertia coefficient, and seawater density. C is the speed of the wave. So we need to calculate the following. The maximum wave induced horizontal drag force and also the maximum wave-induced horizontal inertia force on the structural member. And after that, we need to calculate the maximum total horizontal wave force on the structural member and also when this maximum occurs within the wave cycle. In my video, which I uploaded a couple of days ago, where I showed you how to calculate the maximum wave-induced horizontal drag force, and today we will be talking about how you calculate the maximum wave-induced horizontal inertia force. And in video number three, I will tell you how you would calculate the maximum total force and when this will occur within the wave cycle. So first we start with calculation of wavelengths. To calculate wavelengths, I use the full equation. As you can see, lambda, which is wavelengths, is on both sides of this equation. Therefore, to solve this, you would need to use iteration method. So you can use solver either on your calculator or in Excel to solve this equation. And your wavelength is approximately 225 meters. I show in blue color the equation which you would use if you had deep waves. Um, so it will be simplified version. But for uh, this exercise, I just use full equation. So now we need to see if Morrison equation is applicable. To see if Morrison equation is applicable, we calculate the ratio of diameter of the structure. I define with capital D uppercase d divided by lambda. So this ratio is well below than the limit of 0.2. Therefore, this is the small structure because when this ratio is less than 0.2, structure is defined as small structure. Therefore, Morrison's equation is applicable and can be used to calculate force due to both waves and steady currents. So this is equation which I show, which is Morrison's equation. Uh, on the left hand side we have total force, which is due to both waves and steady currents. On the right hand side we have three terms. First term is um, drag force, which is due to waves, or you can also uh, call this wave-induced drag force. Uh, second term is wave-induced inertia force, and last term is the force, drag force, due to steady currents. Because in the problem we are dealing with mean current, which is negligible, it means that term number three can be neglected, and therefore Morrison's equation is simplified, and we have total force is equal drag force due to waves plus inertia force due to waves. Just would like to show you that full reference for Morrison equation is shown at the bottom of this slide. So you can take this reference and read about Morrison's equation. And also quite often Morrison equation is um, uh, defined as more js, which are first letters of each 
um, surname of the author. So to calculate uh, maximum wave-induced horizontal inertia force, um, I will start first with definition of each term on the right-hand side on this simplified version of Morrison equation. So this is my drag force plus inertia force. So on the left-hand side, we have F, which is the total instantaneous force. On the right-hand side, total uh, drag instantaneous, instantaneous drag force and instantaneous inertia force. Uh, uppercase V, this is instantaneous water particle velocity. Generally has two components, horizontal U and vertical W. Uppercase V with dot on top is the instantaneous water particle acceleration. Also generally has two components, horizontal, which is U dot, and vertical, W dot. And AP is the projected frontal area of the structure, usually taken as diameter of the structure, multiplied by the height of the structure. And also V with index wall, its volume of the structure. So to calculate uh, the maximum wave induced horizontal inertia force, we would need equations for velocity and also equation for acceleration. So I show in this table a uh, summary for different types of waves, intermediate waves, deep waves, and shallow waves. I show equations for uh, longitudinal velocity component, vertical velocity component, and also um, acceleration uh, horizontal and also vertical acceleration component. So to decide which equations apply, we would need to see which waves are um, applicable to this problem. Are the deep waves, shallow waves or intermediate waves? And then we just take equation uh, from this table. This equation by equations, by the way, I don't show any derivations, but these equations are based on linear wave theory. So I just would like to highlight that in the problem uh, you are asked to calculate the maximum wave-induced horizontal drag and inertia force. Therefore, um, we need to see, uh, first of all, we will be dealing only with horizontal velocity component and also horizontal acceleration component. So those two. So we are not calculating vertical uh, drag or vertical inertia force. Let's see if we have uh, deep wave or intermediate wave or shallow wave. So our depth, low case D, depth at the site, which is given in the problem 150 meters, should be greater or equal then 0.5 multiplied by wavelengths. So indeed, 150 meters is greater than 112.4 meters, which is half of wavelengths. Therefore, we are dealing with deep waves. And therefore, for our Morrison equation, we would use this equation for uh, longitudinal or horizontal uh, velocity component and this equation for uh, horizontal acceleration. So <clears throat> in this problem, in this uh, video, we calculate inertia force, therefore we will be using this equation. So let's do calculations for um, maximum wave induced horizontal inertia force. So this, what we do, we do integration. So this is our um, uh, wave induced horizontal inertia force, which is our density multiplied by inertia coefficient, multiplied by uh, cross section area, which is, and we do integration over dz, so over the whole length of the structure. Therefore, this would be volume of the structure. And under integral sign, we have u dot, which is horizontal acceleration component. And we do integration from zero or from still water level up to the seabed, so over the whole water depth. And because below still water level, 
the values of um, vertical values are negative, z is negative, therefore we have from 0 to minus d. So we substitute, um, substituting horizontal acceleration into this integral, and this equation comes from the table on previous slide, we get. So this is our um, in wave induced horizontal inertia force. And on the integral sign, we have u dot dz. So let's take uh, outside of integral sign all the constant values. So all what you see in front of exponent, these are constant values. We can take them outside of integral. Also sign, because there is no z uh, under the sign uh, symbol. Therefore, this can be also taken outside of the integral. And therefore, our, uh, instantaneous, uh, our wave-induced horizontal inertia force becomes all these parameters um, which we have taken outside of the integral. And under integral uh, sign, we have exponent in power kz dz, where k is the wave number. So this is just a standard integral. And from list of integrals or table of integrals from, for example, from Wikipedia, this integral is taken as, so what you see on the left hand side is exactly what we have uh, under the integral symbol. And this is solved as one divided by coefficient in front of X, which is in our case is wave number multiplied by exponent in power KX. So let's do this integration. So I will just repeat this equation again. So this equation, what you see, it's exactly what you saw on previous slide. And now let's do integration. So taking this integral, we have one divided by wave number E in power KZ and integration from zero to minus D. So first we use zero. So this will be E in power k multiplied by 0, and then minus e divided by uh, 1 divided by k, e in power minus kd, because d is with minus. Therefore, I take outside of the brackets 1 divided by k, which is wave number, and in brackets you have 1 minus exponent in power k, d with minus. So, after that, our... Um, wave induced horizontal force can be written as and this is just substituting instead of integral I just substitute this uh, after the integration so I show here in red all the variables for which I have um, data given because we have density we have inertia coefficients we can calculate uh, wave number as 2 pi divided by lambda, which we already calculated. So we have wave number. So we can calculate all these parameters and then we get, get, we get um, wave induced horizontal inertia force as 62.2 multiplied by sine and in brackets kx minus sigma t in kilonewtons. So the force, this wave-induced horizontal inertia force would be maximum when cosine is equal to 1. Therefore, maximum horizontal inertia force is equal 62.2 kilonewtons. So that's it. And in my last video, I will show you how you would calculate total wave-induced horizontal force and also when this occurs within the wave cycle. A few students of mine already asked me how to calculate this and one student said should we just take uh, total force as drag force which we already calculated maximum plus maximum inertia force should we calculate it like that because both forces are horizontal so we can just add them 
Uh, and I would like to tell you that this is not correct way to calculate. So I don't show you now, but I will show you in the next video. Here I just give you some tips how to calculate it. Another student told me, can I calculate this uh, total force as square root of drag force and power 2 plus inertia force and power 2? And again, you cannot use this approach because you would use this approach when you have cases when your, for example, drag force is horizontal and uh, inertia force is vertical. And then you take resultant force using theorem uh, of parallelograms or parallelograms or theorem. So this is not the case. So here you would calculate it slightly differently. I will just give you a hint. And in this hint, I will show you this nice plot. So what I did on this plot, I plotted first um, the water uh, surface of the waves. So it starts with my crest, then trough, then another crest, another trough, and then we have crest. So you can see it's 24 seconds and period of uh, waves in our problem is 12 seconds. So on the bottom plot, what I did, I plotted separately instantaneous drag force, wave induced drag force, instantaneous wave induced inertia force, and also wave induced instantaneous total force by black color. All this, uh, as you can see, and finally, I show maximum total uh, horizontal wave force. And this maximum is equal around 71 kilonewtons. And this occurs approximately 1.2 seconds after the wave crest, because this is your wave crest. As you can see, um, uh, this, when you have maximum of uh, drag force at the, at the same instantaneous, at the same moment of time, your inertia force is not maximum. So I will show you in video number three how you would estimate the total instantaneous horizontal wave force. Okay, so thank you. Goodbye.